Hi, so welcome back. So what are we going to talk about in this course and what are we going to discuss? What kind of uh, topics am I going to cover? So we're going to understand the classical mechanics of fluids and their motion because all of life is made up of fluid. Um, we're going to discuss a few standard laws going back again to Newton's laws of fluids and apply them to biological systems and then we're going to talk about diffusion. Now many of you have heard in the molecular biology context about something called recruitment or how a signaling system can produce a signal from one place and it gets transmitted through the cell. Diffusion is the driving force. We'll discuss a little bit of the details, some of the maths, some of the physics of it and we will also discuss something called the random walk model because that is a key to understanding a lot of these statistical processes. We will then of course go from that to applying these physical models to biological systems in terms of springs and beams. Uh, this is the same thing that uh, that will be something similar to your spring balance system and uh, beams just like the beams that hold our buildings together. Um, and it's surprising because these apply to the mechanics of the cell. Now none of the cells are like your concrete buildings because they don't have just rigid rods but there is something interesting to be learnt by using these physical models to the cellular context in terms of the cytoskeleton. Um, we will then go on to something that is really fascinating for me personally which is the process of active transport at the expense of chemical energy like ATP which drives motion inside a cell and this also drives our nerve transmission, this drives our cell division, this pretty much exists everywhere we look inside a cell. Ironically bacteria get away without it and we will talk a little bit about why. Um, we will proceed to the most fascinating part of biology which is genetics and we will discuss specifically genetic networks and rate equation models. The maths involved involves a little bit of ordinary differential equations and I hope uh, we will keep all of you up to the same speed so that you can follow this part and then I will proceed to discussing some models of stochasticity in biology and morphogenesis in embryonic development. Um, what is important to note here is that this is a young and developing field you will learn new things, these things in terms of the what question will be useful to you. They will also provide you hopefully insight into what is then broadly considered quantitative biology. So maybe we should ask ourselves if you finish the, such a course and you say I am a biophysicist then who was, who are the predecessors, who are the illustrious examples of biophysicists. So you can look at this George von Bekesey uh, who did research on the human ear on hearing. Um, uh, Boris Pavlovich Belusov, uh, so some of you have heard of Belusov's Zabotinsky reactions. Um, Howard Berg uh, who just passed away actually in 2022, so I should probably update this, who discussed the physical limits to bacterial chemotaxis. JC Bose who measured stimulus response in plants because this was initially thought to be plants are sort of non-sentient, they don't react. Um, Max Delbruck discovered that bacteria become resistant to phages as a result of genetic mutations. In fact, set up some of the classic experiments that demonstrated the genetic basis of life. Alan Furst, uh, who pioneered work on protein folding. Eugene Fick, uh, Adolf Fick, who is responsible for fixed laws of diffusion and cardiac output. Um, Hermann von Helmholtz, who first measured nerve conduction velocity and studied hearing and vision. Um, Pauling, Ramachandran, Schrodinger, the list can go on. So, there is a prize for this biophysics area. It's called the Max Delbruck Prize from the American Society for Outstanding Work in Biophysics. So this is a formal discipline unto itself. So I just want to emphasize to you that being a biophysicist is not a bad thing. I know that in, in many contexts in your colleges, uh, you may see that physics department is one building, chemistry department is one building, biology department is one building, but there are disciplinary boundaries that can be crossed and they give rise to productive and fruitful science and I hope you will enjoy learning from me on this. So what this course is not however and what you not do not want to expect from this course and alternative courses I am going to talk a little about right now. So what is the difference between physical biology and biophysics and bioinformatics? So in a way molecular biophysics is what many of you are familiar with. Maybe in your colleges you have heard about this sort of atomistic approach to biology through molecular dynamics, structural biology, extra crystallography and uh, NMR and structural structure based bioinformatics and many of you have probably been excited about docking and creating sort of 3D pictures of ligand uh, receptor binding and so on and so forth because these are very important for drug discovery. Now we are not going to talk about that. Now this is not because I do not think they are interesting but it is because more they are a bit aside from the point that we want to cover over here. So this kind of a picture 
I will probably not be showing you, which is a beautiful ribbon diagram of a protein. Um, for those of you who can read this very quickly here, it's myoglobin um, in our muscle cells. Um, so, where do I find research on cellular biophysics and physical biology? These are um, questions that many people will ask because, you know, um, it's always nice to know that there's a field and every discipline is, is, has its own uh, has its own specialists, but is there anything where you can start reading, right? And this joke cartoon over here basically tells you that, oh, someone says you're trying to predict the behavior of some complicated system, just model it as a simple object, uh, secondary terms will be added to account for its complications, uh, and then you don't really need your own journal, you don't need your own discipline, biophysics is just physics according to the physicists, and biophysics is just biology according to the biologists, so we don't need this subject at all. Now, I am going to try to point you out that reality is otherwise, there's a whole bunch of journals in this field, and you're welcome to look up these after you finish watching this lecture, Soft Matter, Biophysical Journal, Physical Biology, Indian Journal of Biophysics, so there's even an Indian Journal of Biochemistry and Biophysics. I have not seen too many articles in it recently, but indeed these have been around for a while. European Journal, Biophysics Journal, PLOS Computational Biology, Molecular Systems Biology, Bioengineering. Now you notice that the top line actually says the word biophysics in their names, although soft matter does not. Uh, but the lower one has PLOS Computational Biology. Why do I include this? Now it turns out that one of the strong and very successful um, approaches, methodological approaches in biophysics has been computational. So, you will actually find a heck of a lot of work in that. Now, systems biology. Now, systems biology to some people is just genomics and proteomics, but systems biology in its original conception was essentially nothing but an extension of biophysics and, uh, and in some senses the idea that you can look at something as a whole and design comp mathematical and physical models that can explain the behavior of the parts. And this is why you will find quite a few papers in that. And of course, there are interfaces and in overlaps. So, even bioengineering in some senses has in enormous um, relevance to biophysics and we will probably pick a few papers from those journals. Um, the course outline as such is specific in terms of the topics we will cover and we already have discussed this in the course outline, but uh, we will start with life in water, fluid dynamics and cellular life, um, Newton's law of fluids and viscosity, random walk and diffusion, um, cytoskeletal mechanics, uh, molecular motors, uh, genetic networks and their dynamics, stochasticity at a cellular scale, reaction diffusion patterns um, and Turing, how Alan Turing's work meets developmental biology and mechanics and embryonic development. A bonus topic which we will pop in once in a while is on the dimensions, order, magnitude and reasoning. I like to call it biophysics at the beach. We won't actually go to a beach, sorry, but uh, you will see that there are some things you can do without any experimental tools, just using common sense, logic, some simple principles of biology and physics and some reasoning, logical reasoning. Uh, these pictures here are indicative of some one of the books that I'm going to follow quite a bit, Random Walks in Biology. I urge you to at least try to get any copy of it and uh, if there are further questions, we can find a way to um, specifically point you to resources. Um, the cell biology prerequisites are that you need to know what at least DNA and RNA are, proteins, membranes, cytoskeletal motors, molecular motors. Where will you find this? Well, biochemistry textbooks from Leninger, from Alberts, the cell, cell biology textbook of Alberts. These are the classic references for these. This is partly why I kind of assume that you already studied some of these before. Um, for cells, we will talk about E. coli, Saccharomyces cerevisiae and generic plant cells. Um, and for animals, we will talk mostly about Drosophila larvae. We will not touch upon other non-model organisms because of the complexity of the, their behavior. For those, you actually need to take specialized courses. So, the prerequisites in my way are that there are no formal prerequisites other than the fact that you need to know the basic cell and molecular biology, classical mechanics of first year level, basic biochemistry of second year BSc level. Uh, basic mathematics, differential equations up to 12th standard are sufficient, but you need to have had maths at least in your 12th uh, for this to make sense. And you really need to have a curiosity about how we can integrate these elementary principles of physics, computing and biology. If you don't have that curiosity, you will probably find this course a bit of tough going, but I mean, I'm almost positive that if you come with a curious mind and these basic prerequisites, you will do well. Okay? Uh, so, the computational assignments and demonstration labs are going to be about mostly introduction to Python, um, estimating stiffness of optical visa and statistics and segregation of binomial distribution. The tool we are going to use is Python. So, not this Python, but the programming language Python. Um, and uh, 
we will be using it in the environment of anaconda, again another fat snake, but uh, none of these are dangerous. So, you will find that uh, jupiter.org and anaconda.com give you all the tools that you need to install this. We will have a very elaborate discussion on this, do not worry, this is just to remind you that we are going to be using Conda Jupyter Notebook. Now, there are some tricks and tools by which we can do this online and we will discuss the details of it after we go through the basic introduction and tutorials with clearly defined tasks, code testing and individual mentoring. Um, brief discussion at the end of the class will happen after the due date. Okay? Um, the motivation for choosing Python is that you know many people have favorite programming languages and some of you may not even have looked at programming before and do not be afraid, programming is a logic. It's the logic is the important thing. If you do not have logic, then of course, there is a problem. But if you are willing to exercise your logical skills, then you will succeed. Uh, the assignments will be based on uh, problems and tutorials and uh, take home assignments. These are now online. So, we will have a system through the NPTEL framework for evaluating you as well as the timeline. You are almost all assumed to be 18 plus. So, I expect you to be responsible and honest and truth always prevails. Satyameva Jayate. This is the motto of our country and I hope you follow the motto of this country at least to its actual meaning, not to the fact that I have to try to find and police you. Okay? Uh, you must try to learn by solving because if you do not solve it yourself, if you ask someone else to do it for you, you will never learn. Uh, you will complete the assignment, I agree, but uh, this will not be useful for you. So, please try to do things on your own. Now, an important point I want to bring up is that there is something about fair usage and citation in academic reports. Anything that you write to us, especially if you are using it as a, a short essay type answer, then, uh, then you need to cite the source where you have got the material from. Now, uh, I will share with you a document which is what exactly is the definition of academic plagiarism the kinds of plagiarism that you can find in the literature, uh, which you should be avoiding. Um, you must try to tell yourself that copy pasting something from somewhere and submitting it in a situation when you are required to put something original is not okay, okay? not acceptable. Copy paste is not okay, because the problem is when you use other people's work without making it very clear that it is actually other people's work, you are already plagiarizing. Okay? Um, in fact, if you then submit someone else's assignment, it is clear and clear plagiarism. Now, I have had a lot of debates with students in the past. I think some of them have been educational, some of them have been disturbing. Um, I think we will have a discussion on this. Uh, I am glad to talk about it if you have any doubts, but uh, I will also be providing you some quick tips on how to avoid it. Um, this uh, link will be put up in the NPTEL workshop uh, environment. There are policies on online interactions. I would expect you all when you are in live classes or in your tutorial sessions to be polite, to, res to be respectful, depend independent of your gender, sexual orientation, your sex, male, female, non-binary. You must be to the point in your questions. Uh, try to discuss science and class material only. No politics, religion, caste, gender, color issues. This is not okay. This is not acceptable behavior. No trolling people and no harassing people. Uh, this is what we call a good academic environment, a healthy academic environment. I expect you, all of you who are coming here to learn, to actually be focused on the learning. We always make friends by the way and I hope that those friends are based on science and not on other things. Okay? Um, there are a whole bunch of references that I have put together and these will also be provided to you in a PDF form. Um, the book by Philip Nelson on biological physics. Um, Rob Phillips' book, um, Biology by Numbers, um, Introduction to Biophysics by Nordland, uh, Howard Berg's Random Walks in Biology, which I mentioned earlier, Ethier and Simmons' Introductory Biomechanics and Additional Reading are all part of this material. Now, of course, that does not mean that you have to sit and read them. It only means that if you want to read more than what I am talking about, those are the places to go. Okay? Remember, classroom is only your start point, not the end point of your learning process. Um, the learning outcomes that I think you are going to get, what are you going to gain from this course, right? Uh, is that you will look at biological examples of inanimate physics, uh, because in the same sense that if you remember in your high school physics, you talked about, we talked about bouncing balls and projectile motion, we are going to talk about only biological examples and try to put the biology in the context of physics. Uh, we are going to talk, we are going, you are going to learn at the end of this course about classical biomechanics. Uh, you are also going to learn about some statistical models that allow us 
to make sense of the variability in biology because without the physics much of these things will just become a little pointless. You can do biostatistics but this is not the aim of the course. The aim of this course is not to do statistical testing but to understand the why and the how of it. Okay? Uh, you will also learn some standard models from physics in the biological context and programming in Python and gene regulation as dynamical systems you will realize that synthetic biology which is often considered to be like the new revolution after biotechnology and recombinant DNA technology um, is a very powerful tool for understanding as well as exploring biophysics. Um, we will end with developmental biophysics which is a new and upcoming field and I hope that those of you who study this will maybe continue to pursue some of these subjects in your future endeavors in education or even in research. Uh, the models, the standard models that we're going to talk about are springs and beams, random walk model, polymerization kinetic models, gene regulation models, forms and bubbles and ODE models. Um, in a way, what you will see hopefully is that we go from cellular biophysics in the direction more of more biology in terms of quantitative biology in, and in terms of more physics in terms of physical biology and this interplay will learn, help you learn to appreciate how these crossing of interdisciplinary boundaries gives you a deeper insight into the biology which is what the aim of this course is to give you a tool of the mind to approach biology from a quantitative perspective. Um, there is much more reading, um, there are things I will not have time to cover. For those of you who want to do this extra reading, you are welcome to do it. Uh, Ilya Prigozhin's Time's Arrow is a classic. Uh, Prigozhin incidentally is a Nobel laureate, Darcy Wentworth Thompson's book which I mentioned on growth and form, uh, Brown Western Enquist's pa classic paper in science, um, Mark Peterson's Galileo's discovery of scaling laws, Biology by Numbers which is an online database, uh, JBS Haldane on being the right size and a recent paper that we published in Resonance which is a science education journal. So feel free to read, I hope you enjoy this journey and I hope I look forward to uh, intense and interactive coursework with you and take you to a point where you appreciate the power of these tools and the learning lessons in terms of understanding quantitative biology. Thank you very much for listening and next time when we meet, we are going to continue on fluids, um, life in fluids, life of fluids and fluid mechanics. So thank you very much and see you next time, bye bye.